Thank you, Brian. So we'll deliver speech number 15 overall, really it's five, from this thing that's called the Storytelling Man. One of the basically countless manuals that we can get to move on from after the initial one. And the title of this speech is Better Than the Best. Evaluating James will be correct. <laughs> who will now tell us the objectives, the manual objectives of the speech. The objectives of project number five from the storytelling manual, Bringing History to Life, are to understand the purpose of stories about historical events or people, and to use the storytelling skills developed in the preceding projects to tell a story about a historical event or person. Time is seven to nine minutes. James has been a member since September 2012. He's currently our club president today. It happens to be his last meeting as club president. Oh. But he'll leave so And during the day, James works on technology startups. So in addition to the manual objectives, James's personal objectives are one, don't ramble. Two, use pauses. Effectively. And three, move around. Right. A deep right. So please join me in welcoming James, better than the best, better than the best, James. Behind the curtain, there was a small boy, and I'm going to call it Sam. And he peeked behind that curtain and saw his father walking down the driveway into his truck and drove away. Sam walked out from the, behind the curtain, but a sigh of relief. He didn't have to go with his dad today. Boom! His door flung open. The towering figure said, Sam, what are you doing hiding over there? Mom, I didn't want to go with Pa today. He makes people cry. He takes things away from them. The year was 1923. It's in the middle of the Great Depression. Sam's mom and dad had already sold all their jewelry and all their watches to bring food on the table. And the only job that Sam could, Sam's father could get was a repossessor, repo man, someone taking farms away during the Great Depression. And Sam went with his father and saw the tears that it brought to the people that he was taking the farms away from. He heard the sounds of people screaming when he came and saw them gripping the one thing that they loved, their only source of income, their farm, their home. Sam's mom sat next to Sam on the bed, put her arm around him. Look, Sam, your father has to take things away in order to give us food. I know you don't like that, but maybe you could try doing what I do instead. I don't take away, I actually give to people. I sell things to people. If you want to help me with that, you need to promise me one thing. Sam jumped up, looked at his mom in the eyes and grabbed her hands. Yes, mom, anything. You need to promise me that no matter what you do, especially sell, you will be better than the best. Sam's fist pinched tight. Conviction surged through his veins. He stood up straight. Most kids his age, at the age of eight, wouldn't even understand this request. Most would lie or be intimidated by it, but instead for Sam, it brought him to life. He took it seriously and he looked at his mom. Yes, I promise. So when he started middle school, he woke up before the sun every day to milk the cows so his mom could bottle them and he could sell them after school. All while joining Boy Scouts and becoming the state's youngest Eagle Scout at the age of 13. And then in high school, Sam started a paper route, sold papers in the morning before school, on the way to school, and after school as well. All while becoming the quarterback of his football team and leading their high school to a state championship. And then in college, he didn't have much money. He had to raise his own money. He sold magazines, pays entire tuition, all while becoming the class president. Sam knew how to sell things. 
Sam definitely strove to be the best. And after World War II ended, when he came back from the war, at the age of 27, he wanted to settle down. He wanted to do the thing that he knew how to do best, and that was sell things. And he wanted to go to the big city and compete with the big guys. He wanted to open a retail store. But his wife said, no, you're not going to the big city. We're simple folk here. We're from rural America. We get forgotten. She knows the initiative, the promise that Sam has himself to make a difference. She wanted Sam to make a difference in rural America for their people. So Sam opened a retail store in a small rural town of just 7,000 people. He didn't ever have any real uh, retailer experience before. And so he went back to his mother's words, be better than the best. So he walked across the street to the other retail store in town and copied down all the prices and talked to the employees and looked at all the processes. And he went back to his store and did the same thing. But it just wasn't, he wasn't just a copycat. He also focused on the customer. One time he saw these old women leaning over looking for some barrels, looking for some items they could buy that were a good deal. They saw at the bottom of the dresses their knickers completely tattered. In the Great Depression times, women didn't buy clothing. They didn't buy lingerie. That was not a focus during those times. So Sam made sure his store was full of lingerie and varieties of it. One time he saw a mother walk into his town are in store with 10 different kids. That's how they did it back then. And it was a disaster. So he did something truly innovative that none of these rural folk have seen before. He bought an ice cream machine. And he put it in the front of his store to make it more family-centric. But what he hated the most is when people came to the store and they weren't able to buy anything because they were still trying to get out of the Great Depression. So what Sam did on the weekends, after hours, he drove his truck, his pickup truck, across state lines so he could go directly to the manufacturers and buy discounted goods and find good deals, pile his truck nice and high and drive back so he could give discounted goods to the people in his town. Remember, this was rural America. They had never seen this level of consumerism before. That was only for the big city folk. Affordable prices, quality customer care. Yes, Sam was an entrepreneur. And yes, Sam was innovating with consumerism in the 50s. That's how it was. He became a local hero. His business boomed. But it only boomed for five years. He made a fatal mistake. When he signed that lease, you didn't see that. It had no renewal contract after five years. So, the landlord said, you got to get out of here. I'll buy your store, but you're out. Sam was left without a store. He had been bested. Going back to the words of his mom, Sam, you need to be better than the best. Going back to the advice of his mother, Sam, help rural America. And back to what he loves the most, he loved to give to people, to sell to people. So, he opened another store in another rural town, but this time with the 99 year olds. And Sam continued to innovate for rural America. The entitlement of consumerism, again, wasn't just for the city folk, it was coming to rural towns all over America, and they loved him for that. And after 10 years, Sam had 16 stores. Big success. And then when he passed away in 1990, he had over 2,000 stores. And Forbes magazine named him the richest man in the United States. Sam, his full name, for those that haven't guessed already, is Sam Walton, the founder of Walmart. Many city folk scourge his name to this day, scourge his legacy. But just remember, in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, there was a man changing lives in rural America, giving them opportunity, allowing them to buy what they wanted to buy, just like everybody else. In rural America,
America, consumerism exploded. And it was in rural America where Sam became better than the best.